Hey guys, so this video is going to be mainly me talking about uh, micro long range tech stuff and sort of the latest evolution on my micro long range setups. Uh, it's a really technical video um, and I have a bunch of topics to cover. So let's dive right into it uh, and let's start with basically the two micro long range setups I'm running at the moment uh, after going through really a whole bunch of different iterations. And mainly I ended up with two different uh, setups. I have still have an analog setup. This one is a pretty minimalistic setup. Uh, it runs a Micro Eagle, a Rush Tank VTX and a Flywoo uh, 16 by 16 stack. I still run 1404s on 3S on all of my micro long range. I mean, I get asked a lot if 1505 is better. And honestly, I did not test the Beta FPV 1505s yet um, because I just don't want to add any weight to my uh, build and I want to stick with a 16 by 16 stack because I think uh, as soon as you move up to 4S and bigger motors, you will, I mean, for reliable purposes, you will need a uh, 20 by 20. So you're making the whole thing heavier. You need to stretch the frame by six millimeters. CNC Madness has this modified version that makes it a bit heavier. Uh, you have heavier motors on there and I just don't really see the point for a setup that is mostly about cruising. Um, <laughs> back, to, back to my actual point, I mean, I do now have a very light and um, very minimalistic analog setup that I mostly use for real sort of performance driven flight where I want to shave off all the weight. So it wants 138 grams. If you can see this very weight optimized and this is something I use together with this lithium ion pack which is I think heavier than the quad itself yeah it's 160 grams so I moved away from lithium ion packs in my initial testing because it's pretty much impossible uh, to stay below the 250 gram limit on lithium ion packs but um, quite frankly I just uh, Dropped, dropped this objective here to get maximum flight time. So I have this very light build, a pretty huge and heavy battery. And this, uh, in my first few initial test flights, I haven't done a, te a lot of testing with that, unfortunately, yet. But on my first test flights under pretty windy conditions, I got up to 30 minutes of cruising around 30, 35 kilometers an hour on this uh, analog setup. But uh, honestly, my sort of daily driver and overall, the quad I use most is this DJI uh, Vista equipped version of the micro long range. Now, this one, uh, I think, is a really good evolution of the initial micro long range concept, which, which started off with uh, sort of the TARS year split double, sort of double, uh, <laughs> split type double cameras um, with a 4K cam and an FPV cam, so still analog. The Vista didn't exist back in uh, December of last year when I built the first micro long range setups. Uh, but honestly, these did not prove to be super reliable. That's why I have a bunch of broken ones here. Um, I mean, they, they just broke in pretty basic crashes, just due to G-force, most of them. Uh, which was annoying and then the GI system just performed so perfectly so since the Vista came out which was sort of a perfect match for the micro long range although I never intended uh, I never designed the frame for the Vista it just fits perfectly um, so I'm running this DJI setup the only thing it was missing um, was you know good HD footage because you can record HD with the Vista but uh, it doesn't look perfect so it looks okay but I mean it's recorded with the goggles there's no onboard DVR so you will have um, you know you will see the video quality drop as your signal quality drops which is all pretty annoying so um, well the solution is here the Insta360 Go uh, which is just really a really really cool piece of technology that I can totally recommend for the micro long range This is almost almost a perfect match here um, I'm not going to go into too much technical detail of the Insta 360 go But I do think that for the size of it and it's uh, I think it's like 20 grams. Let's check this 
Yeah, it's pretty exactly 20 grams. For a 20 gram camera, the stabilization and image quality is pretty impressive and it's a really perfect match for the micro long range. Especially if you're only on uh, doing video basically on, um, on Instagram and not on YouTube where it doesn't bother you too much, it's just 1080p, this is perfect. The app is really cool, I can do most of the video editing of videos I upload completely on my phone. It's super easy to do. You can um, you know, rotate the video, cut it, everything with the app it comes with. So really a recommendation. Up. The only downside is it only records for five minutes. Um, and obviously uh, with the micro long range you will get longer flight times. So that's just a real pity. I hope that um, there will be additional updates because I think the only problem is that the camera is just overheating so that's um, yeah that's really a pity with the five minutes but still in these five minutes you just get great footage uh, so absolute recommendation for this um, yeah and then overall I think now we have really reached a super impressive uh, level of technology for a sub 250 here so you have the 50 Mbit uh, HD footage in your goggles. You have a stabilized HD camera that does really, really very decent footage. You can have up to 30 minutes of flight time, I mean a bit less with this heavier setup. Um, where I'm also still running 14.04 motors. So really a good evolution of the micro long range. And um, I mean at the moment I am working with a company, namely Flywoo, on further evolutions of this. So there will be um, will be things like uh, specific motors, ready to fly versions, a lot of things coming up that I will be able to announce in the coming weeks. And on a side note, in case you wonder how I'm running three UARTs of a 16x16, so I have Crossfire, the uh, Cadex Vista, these are two UARTs, and then I'm also running a GPS on here. Um, there is a way to modify the Flywoo 16x16 to get free UART. So if you want to know how to do it, um, there is a micro long range owners Facebook group. And uh, there's a post, a meta post describing how to uh, hack the Flywoo 16x16 to get free UARTs. And uh, thanks to Flywoo because uh, they came up with the solution to get these free UARTs. Um, so check out the Facebook group if you want to know how this works. Uh, but for now, um, these are sort of the latest evolutions of the micro long range concept. I haven't changed anything on the frame basically. This thing has really held up well uh, with time and with the latest evolutions in the FPV market. It was just like basically felt like the, so many things were released that were almost like they were designed for this frame. Uh, and I'm, I'm speaking of the Insta360 Go of course and the Cadex Vista, so really cool here. Now, um, next topic is uh, ultralight five inch quad. So may maybe you, you realized there seems to be a lot of movement in the industry towards very light five inch quads, or even to uh, sub to 55 inch quads. So we saw a lot of bigger um, five inch T-mount props, four inch T-mount props. We see 2004 size motors coming up. Kebab came up with a 2203 motor. So uh, I think iFlight is releasing a, um, if I'm not wrong, it's a 2005 or something similar, also T-mount. So we are seeing a move in the direction of very light five inch uh, quads. And uh, that's why I have a little bit of work in progress. I can show you this. I mean, this went through already quite a lot of iterations. Um, this is almost a final prototype you're seeing here. I'm still in the process of building this, not quite done yet, but this is sort of a bigger brother for the micro long range. It's a five inch version of it. Um, I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna call it, but overall quite similar electronics layout. Just this one is double 20 by 20. I have 2004 1950 kV motors on here. So this is going to be a 6S setup. But I'm planning to do something I do on all my uh, 6 and 7 inch uh, long range quads. If I want to get good flight times, I use 6S motors on 4S packs. So that's what I will try for this ultralight concept too. It's um, honestly quite surprisingly light. This is uh, as it is at 190 grams. I think it will be around 200, 210 grams after I added all the components. Um, 
I'm, I mean, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure there really is a point to this. I mean, yes, uh, I think this style of quad looks cool and it might fly pretty well, but uh, it will be above 250 grams with all the equipment on there. And then the question arises, why not, you know, move to a 7 or 6 inch uh, classic long range build if you're above 250 anyway. So what I do hope and what would justify this sort of uh, class of quads, class of very light uh, freestyle long range quads would be uh, being more stealthy and more quiet. So I really hope that this, because of its low weight of uh, around 200 grams without the battery, could be way quieter than a, a 7 inch draw, draw way less attention and this is for many people including me a problem of having extremely loud quads drawing extreme amounts of attention being scary to people so I hope that this here um, could be uh, maybe as stealthy as a micro long range so very quiet very non-threatening while being uh, a bit bigger and able to carry an actual GoPro, so more than uh, than just a small Insta360 Go or something, uh, but really carry a bit more weight and carry bigger for s lithium ion batteries and so on. Now another thing uh, that kind of tempted me to come up with this design is that, I mean, this frame is is quite a bit larger than the micro long range, and um, I didn't have to be as nitpicky on the weight. I could add a few more grams here and there had a bit more, you know, room and material to play with. So this frame allowed me to test a new design. So as you see, this frame here does have boomerang arms, uh, but they are mounted sort of sideways. So this is how the arm looks. This is perfectly 90 degree, perfect 90 degree alignment of the arm. So um, you can still cut them along the weave, but it's a one piece arm and it's still quite cheap to make. And um, it's fixed here by something I used on my we get this a five inch toothpick. This is uh, the famous bike bolt. This is holding up these arms. And um, the advantage here is, I mean, it's a super simple construction. Uh, it's just really one bolt and you can apply massive amounts of torque on, on these bolts. There's no way to strip them. Un unlike um, you know, M3 screws that you always strip that might break. These things are incredibly, uh, incredibly stable. As I already mentioned, they are designed to hold the entirety of your body weight uh, when mounting uh, you know, the gears on a crankshaft of a bicycle. These are incredibly stable. I think it does look pretty cool, to be honest. And one thing that allows me this frame for its weight, this is 56 grams, including all these TPU parts that are in there. So including the battery pad, uh, the mount for the Crossfire and the GPS and the antenna mount, this is only 56 grams. Um, this allows me to have a very light and very stiff frame because basically I can completely de decouple um, the parts that are under stress and under loads and crashes and the parts that are basically just holding components. So as you see this front part here is a thick two millimeter plate holding uh, basically boxing in these arms. So I, I can put all the heft, all everything here in front where it takes hits. Also have TPU here to shield it a little bit. All this rigidity is up front and here basically have a thinner plate that is uh, in principle just holding the Calyx Vista. So you can really um, really have a thicker, more robust plate here and not making this frame heavier. So this is uh, something I'm experimenting with. Also, I, it's sort of a hybrid construction. So uh, one thing that bothered me a little bit about the micro long range front end is that um, the Cadex Vista, the DJI camera, is sort of popping out and you have to put a little hood on there uh, or you would make the front part longer, so it wasn't really optimal. Um, per not the perfect protection of the camera and since I had more room here, this now has a hybrid front end, so there's this carbon, uh, horseshoe shaped carbon brace here up front. The camera is sitting in flexible TPU, shock absorbing, so you can see if you would crash here on the front and since this is still a dead cat layout, you have a pretty good chance of crashing here on this front part. Um, this would just hit TPU, absorb the shock until it hits carbon here. So already you would kind of, you know, break it, absorb a bit of the shock energy, hit the carbon and, and protect your camera. And another nice thing, this allows me to integrate a GoPro mount. So this is a standard GoPro mount, with a nice alloy screw here, where you could mount, uh, you know, anything from a Session Hero 8 or um, Insert 360 Go on. So this is what I'm going to be testing next. Just a little uh, sneak peek here 
on how this frame looks. Um, and as soon as I uh, have done more testing with this, I'll make another video for now. Um, but I'm not really sure how I'm gonna run this. I mean, I plan to run this on 4S batteries. I'm not really sure about the size. I also have small 6S packs. So I'm gonna try a bunch of different things. I also might try different KV motors. I'm not sure going for 6S actually makes that much sense, that much, that much sense on, on um, such a life 5 inch or 4S or 3S might also be a solution. Um, and then I, I was talking to uh, Flywu also about these motors and they told me that uh, actually in their testing they are 1507 motors was more efficient than a 2004 or 2203. Um, so uh, they proposed to send me a a set, so I'll also try this. Uh, so different motors, so just what is ongoing. So let's see if this uh, five inch ultralight uh, class of quads catches on and let's see if we can make a decent long range setup out of it. Um, mm -hmm. All right, so that's a bit what I'm working on. Uh, oh yeah, and on a side note, uh, Banggood asked me to share uh, some 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 sale they have <laughs> again. So uh, I think what would be useful for you is all these coupons. Um, so I, I list a bunch of coupons for you to get stuff cheaper um, down in the video description and the comments. Uh, and yeah, I think I covered everything I wanted to talk about today. So if you have any more questions, uh, any suggestions or things uh, for future videos, feel free to comment. Um, thanks guys, thanks for watching.